Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Jane, thank you for, um, for such a, a great welcome. And I thank you for um, uh, making this less formal. You said something just a moment ago that, I, that, that gave me great joy. And you said, when you are evolved, you don't really care whether or not people think that you know, you're, you're cool or not. Um, well, I just want to confess to you, I'm not quite that evolved yet. So I had my, my notes printed at 24 points so I don't have to wear these glasses. So I just want to start by saying I'm thrilled to, uh, to welcome you here to Indianapolis. Um, and thank you for the invitation to join you uh, this afternoon. And as you begin your critical work over these next couple of days, I do see your work as critical, and we all do, because I believe, as your conference theme suggests, that the arts do lead the way to student success. And in doing so, I believe they lead us to success as a, as a society. And as you all know better than I, a generation or, or so ago, business leaders, politicians, educators here in the United States began to worry about our ability to compete with other advanced economies in the long term. Stories about the rigorous educational systems in Japan and Germany were everywhere. And quite naturally, we all wanted to make sure that the US kept up. So we started testing our students as a way to determine how successful we, the grown-ups, were at educating them, the kids. And it turns out that the more that we tested, the less happy we became with the results. The tests seemed to prove to us that US children were not spending enough time on real subjects like language arts and math. Arts education, cultural enrichment, even recess time came to be seen as luxuries that our students could do without. Now, we don't all have to be statisticians uh, to make the connection that the more we cut arts programs, the lower test scores keep falling. Is that right? We cut more, scores fall more. It's a death spiral, not just for our education system, but for our society at large. Because while the skills that, are, that all of our standardized test, test measure are important, they are by no means the only skills that arts education impacts. Namely, improving visual uh, analysis skills, learning from mistakes, being creative, making better critical judgments. A 2014 University of Arkansas study found exposure to the arts makes young people more tolerant and empathetic. Now, at what time in this country's history is tolerance and empathy more important? So the more arts education we cut from our children's days, the more we limit their ability to learn from mistakes and, de and demonstrate better judgment, the more we impair their ability to develop tolerance and empathy. And if there's one thing we all know, we're going to need going forward, regardless of profession or position or standing in society, it's the ability to learn from our mistakes, to demonstrate better judgment, to be tolerant and to have empathy. And that's why I'm so happy to see you all here and to support the work that you all are doing. And I'm happy to report, I think the tide is turning, at least here in Indianapolis. In fact, just four weeks ago, our very own mayor, Joe Hogsett, unveiled the Create Indy Grant Program, a $350,000 investment in our city's cultural districts to drive economic development and innovation in the arts. And as he announced the program, the mayor said, we know a healthy arts community is a sign of an engaged, inclusive, and thriving city. And that's true, but I believe it goes even further. We know a healthy arts curriculum is a sign of an engaged, inclusive, and thriving education system. We also know a healthy arts curriculum creates engaged, inclusive, and thriving students. And we also know engaged, inclusive, and thriving students become engaged, inclusive, and thriving citizens. And those citizens create an engaged, inclusive, and thriving democracy. And that's how the arts will lead us all to success. And for that, I thank you. And for all of you Indianapolis residents, by the way, Indianapolis welcomes all. Never forget that. 
It, it, is, it is a motto. So for all of our Indianapolis residents here, discuss amongst yourselves at your tables just how wonderful the city is. <laughs> and that it's just like home. Is that all right? All of my Indy residents? Now, let me start, uh, if you don't mind. I'd like to introduce um, the performance group, um, the Kids Dance Outreach. Six years ago, Michael Johnson, the founder, had a vision for, for kids coming in off the street uh, and, being, and, and having um, an environment where they could learn to dance, where they could learn the discipline and the collaboration that comes with dance. It was very powerful. And he has, since that time, gotten into 20 different schools, engaged over 8,000 students. Um, and, and when you see them this, this afternoon, you will see the joy that they bring. I thank Michael and, and Kids Dance uh, Outreach for the work that they do. And in fact, we love them so much that we're trying to get them a new building, right? Yes. So when you see them right now, uh, please welcome them. We're excited that they're in our city and we're excited for the citizens that, that those kids will, will, will soon become. Kids Dance Outreach, thank you very much.